I'm Tom and today I'm going to give you a very basic walkthrough of configuring, uploading and debugging your 3D printer's firmware. So the firmware controls basically every aspect on your printer. From step control over heater management to the communication with the printer host, everything is handled by some part of the firmware. Now on 99.9% .9 of all printers, the firmware runs on an Atmel chip, which makes the control board Arduino compatible. So naturally, we're going to be using the Arduino environment to configure and upload the firmware. If you don't have Arduino installed yet, head over to arduino.cc and download and install the latest stable Arduino software. Check the video description below for a link. So I kind of lied when I said the controllers are Arduino compatible. Uh, for many of them, especially the ones like the ramps, where an actual Arduino board is the basis of the controller, you can use the Arduino environment just like it comes out of the box. However, for some boards like the Sanguine or Lolo, the Melzi or the printer board, you'll need to download a hardware configuration set so that the Arduino software knows how to talk to the board. Uh, you'll find these linked in the RepRap wiki or on the board's manufacturer's page. Uh, once you get the file, close the Arduino software if you have it open and unzip the file you downloaded into Arduino's sketchbook folder. On Windows and Mac, that's usually Documents Arduino. On Linux, it's the sketchbook folder in your user's home directory. Uh, inside, you'll find a folder called Hardware. Uh, when unzipping the files, make sure you end up with a folder named after your control board that in turn has folders called bootloaders, cores and so on. Uh, if you installed it correctly, you'll now be able to select your board within Arduino and upload firmware to it. So the firmware I'm going to be using is Marlin, which is the most popular firmware at the moment. Again, check the video description for a download link to a fresh copy of Marlin. Unpack the zip file and you'll find the Marlin.ino file, which you can open with the Arduino software. Uh, since the Marlin firmware is being very actively developed, some of the options might look a bit different if you downloaded the newer version. Um, still, the basics aren't going to change, so that's what I'll be covering in this video. Also, if you're using a 3D printer kit uh, or a ready-built printer, check with the manufacturer of your printer. They might just have a pre-configured version for download uh, that you can either tweak to your heart's content or use as a basis for a fresh configuration. So, as you open up Marlin, it will flood your Arduino software with heaps of tabs. Uh, the important one for now is configuration.h, which contains all the basic settings. Uh, what is really important with these settings is that you don't change the punctuation or separators, like commas or brackets, unless you know exactly what you're doing. If you're unsure if you mess things up, hit the compile button up here and it will throw an error if things aren't right. So as we work our way through the configuration file, Keep in mind that there are a lot of settings in here that aren't crucial to running your printer. So I'll be skipping those and focusing on the ones that are really important for getting your printer running for the first time. Um, the first important setting in here is the baud rate, which is the speed at which your printer communicates with the host. Uh, the default is 250,000. If you're having trouble connecting to your printer, try 115,200 instead. But for now, we're just going to leave it at 250,000. As you scroll down, the next important setting is picking the right board. Each of the popular boards has a number assigned to it, and all you need to do is enter that number down here, and Marlin will use the proper settings for that board. I'm using a Melty board, so that's number 63. Uh, the next crucial setting is picking the right thermistors. The thermistor is the temperature sensor in your hot end and your heated bed. Uh, most manufacturers will tell you which thermistor they're using. For example, E3D uses number 5, the Semitech uh, thermistor. So down here where it says temp sensor 0, that is the first hot end. So we're going to be saying temp sensor 0 is number 5. Temp sensor 1, which will be a second hot end, is not used, so that's 0. And if you have a heated bed, you can also enter the thermistor you're using there. So for example, if you're just using a generic 100K thermistor, you can use temperature table number one. So the next important block of settings are the PID settings. 
Um, the block up here are the PID settings for your hot end. Uh, if you don't know the KP, KI and KD values you should be putting in here, leave them at the defaults and run PID Autotune. This is the spot where you'll be entering those values that the PID Autotune gives you. Uh, next up is the bed temperature control. Now the bed works a bit different uh, to the hot end. By default, Marlin doesn't use PID for the bed and it's just switching it on and off depending on whether the temperature is too high or too low. Uh, to get a much better and more stable temperature control, you can enable PID for the bed. Uh, you do this by uncommenting this line up here where it says define PID temp bed. However, you should not be using PID if you're driving your bed through a relay or a solid state relay. If you're using the default transistor, the MOSFET on your control board, uh, there is going to be absolutely no problem in using PID. Um, now, the same thing as with the hardened applies here. Uh, if you don't know KP, KI and KD values that work for your bed, run Autotune and use the values that that gives you. So the next block of settings is the end stop settings. Um, regular printers have X, Y and Z min end stops, which means that the end stops are sitting at the zero position of each axis. Now this setting right here tells the firmware whether or not uh, the end stop is putting out an inverted signal or not. Usually for opto end stops, you can set these settings to true. Um, if you're using micro switches, set them to false. If you don't know which setting to use, just leave them at true and try it out. Uh, the max end stops are normally not used, so we, we can just ignore those settings for now. Now the invert X direction, invert Y direction and invert Z direction settings don't matter much. Uh, if your axis is moving in the wrong direction, you can just flip the motor connector around. So we're just going to set all these to false for now. and adjust the direction with the motor connector. So the next setting, uh, the X, Y and Z max positions are going to tell the firmware how large your printer is. So by default, this is set up for a Mendel or Ultimaker size printer where X, Y and Z are about 20 centimeters long. For now, we're just going to leave it at 200 millimeters uh, since that is a really common size. Next up is auto bed leveling. That is an advanced feature and not crucial to running your printer for the first time. So, so that's going to be a separate video. And the next block of setting that's, that's interesting is the movement settings. Um, and the setting in here that is most important is the default axis steps per unit. Uh, this is the steps per millimeter settings that is often talked about. So the values in here are basically X, Y, Z and E for the extruder. Um, and what they tell the firmware is how many steps it needs to send to the stepper driver and motor to get one millimeter of movement out of the axis. Um, for X, Y and Z, you use Prusa's calculator uh, to get proper values. The extruder steps per millimeter, however, should be calibrated. So as a basic starting value for a geared extruder, use 500 steps per millimeter. Um, for a direct drive extruder, use 250 millimeters and then do a calibration. Next up is the max feed rate, which is the maximum speed your printer's axes will be able to run it. So the default settings in here are set up really fast. Almost none of the common printers can do 500 millimeters per second. So we're going to reduce that to 200 for now. Again, this is X, this is Y, and this is the Z axis. If you have a regular lead screw driven Z axis, use three millimeters per second for now. Uh, the next line is the max acceleration for each axis. That is the speed at which the axis accelerates at. So again, the defaults are set fairly high. 9000 millimeters per second squared is something that an Ultimaker can achieve, 
but it's going to be almost impossible for a regular printer to manage. So an acceptable value for these are 3000 millimeters per second squared. If you find that your printer starts skipping steps during small moves, uh, reduce the acceleration for that axis. If it's skipping steps on longer moves, reduce the max feed rate. So the next setting down here is the default acceleration, which is the acceleration of the nozzle itself across the bed. And the re retract acceleration does the same thing, but for retracts, uh, you can leave those at the default. So as we're scrolling down, there is one more setting that the Marlin firmware is known for, and that is the jerk setting. The default of 20 is again set fairly high, a setting of 15 or 18 will give you fairly nice prints at regular speeds. If you're printing really fast, you should probably also increase the jerk. Again, keep in mind that that might lead to your printer skipping steps. So that's basically it. As you're scrolling down, you'll find a couple more settings uh, for LCD and encoder support and so on. But again, those are not crucial to printing. Uh, those are comfort features. So we're just going to leave them as they are for now. So that's the very basic configuration. But wait, there's more. Uh, there's one more setting that you really should enable, and that's hidden in the configuration underscore adv.h file, which is the advanced configuration. And that setting is the heating sanity check. That setting makes sure that in the case of your thermistor failing or falling out of the hot end, um, it doesn't melt your hot end down or set your printer on fire because it's overheating. Uh, so to enable that, you remove the comments here and in the next line, and that will be a basic but really effective protection for your hot end. So the firmware is ready to be uploaded at this point. Connect your control board via USB, make sure you select the right serial port and hit upload. The firmware will compile and the Arduino software will upload it to the board. Wait till the LED stops flashing and the Arduino says upload completed. Now your board is basically ready to use. Here's a couple of basic checks that you can do to make sure you don't have any major errors in the configuration. Before you power up your 12 or 24 volt power supply, connect to the board with your favorite wrapper post software and check that the temperatures it's reporting are plausible. Uh, if not, you probably selected the wrong thermistor. As you turn on the power supply, make sure that the temperatures don't start rising on their own and that no part of the control board starts cooking. Uh, when it passes that test, use the host to move each axis by a bit and check that it moves in the right direction. Uh, keep in mind that the movements are taken from the nozzle relative to the bed. So if you have a moving bed and move Y positive, the bed should move towards you. Use the right hand rule to get a basic idea of which axis has its positive direction and which end. Uh, hold your right hand out like this and from your point of view, this is X, this is Y, and this is Z positive when you're looking at the printer from the front. If an axis only moves in one direction, you probably have the end stop inverted sitting wrong. If it always moves in the wrong direction, flip the motor connector around after turning the power off or invert the axis in Marlin's config. Next, check the end stop's functionality by homing one axis at a time. But keep a finger on the power switch. Uh, if the axis starts moving away from the end stop, the home direction is set wrong. Uh, when the axis moves towards the end stop, try stopping it by triggering the end stop by hand so that the axis doesn't crash into the end stop if something else is set up wrong. If the axis doesn't react to the end stop when homing, you probably have it hooked up to the wrong axis. Sending M119 to your printer will tell you which end stop you're actually triggering at the moment. Now, before you start printing anything, you should also calibrate your extruder if you use an estimate steps per millimeter value in the config. Also, set your C end stop if you haven't done so already, and you should be able to get your first print out. So that's the basic process of getting Marlin running on your board. Uh, I hope this video helped you getting started. So as always, please like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next.